Okay, so in this video I'm gonna show you how to create this design on this OLED screen using the OLED screen and the Arduino Uno. And you already know it from the title of the video. This time it will be different because this time I will not be writing any code. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, but more about them later in the video. So what does it mean not writing any code? Let me explain. Usually when I do a project like this, I would start in Photoshop or in Photopy, which is a free online editor similar to Photoshop, and I would draw rectangles and the outlines and add some labels, maybe some lines. But for the most part, I will be using the pencil tool and fill the individual pixels to create some nice looking images and icons. And actually, as I talk, you can see me trying to recreate this screen in the Photopy tool. And once I'm happy with the design, I want to put this on the OLED screen, but that takes a few more steps. I need to export the individual icons as images and then convert those to C-style arrays using, for example, the image to CPP website. Then I can copy those arrays into my Arduino sketch and I can draw those images using the draw XBMP function. However, this function requires a position, so I need to go back to Photopy and find out what's the position of the icon. And while it takes only a few clicks, I need to do it for every single icon. And not just icons, but also all the labels and other elements. For example, if I want this progress bar field to be drawn as a rectangle, I need to click this distance it's checkbox and write down the X and Y values as well as the width and height. So I think that you can already tell that it takes some time to turn this design into the Arduino code. So let me show you how to make this process much simpler and faster. But before I do so, let me talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is a PCB way. And not only you can get PCBs, but also 3D printing and CNC machining and other types of manufacturing. Also, if you use the link down in the description, you can get 10 PCBs for free, only paying for shipping. So thank you PCB way, and let's get back to our video. So yes, you can skip a lot of steps in the process. And that's by using a free online editor called Lopaka. So this editor started as a tool for creating custom screens for Flipper Zero. But the creator recently decided to add support for more devices and more libraries. And one of the library is UHG2 that you can use with Arduino Uno and OLED displays. So let me show you how to use this tool. So as a first step, we need to change the library to UHG2 and set the correct display resolution, which in my case is 128 by 64 pixels. Now we have access to all the different tools in the middle of the screen. So if I want, I can, for example, draw a frame by clicking this frame button and then drawing the frame in this display area. And if I switch to the code tab, you can see that we have a new line saying draw frame with some parameters, those being the X and Y position and the width and height of the frame. And as I change the values in here on the right side of the window, for example, the X position, you can see it's also changing in the code. So just like this, we can draw a frame, see how the frame looks like. But at the same time, we have a code that we can use for our Arduino sketch. So we don't have to remember those numbers and we can just use this code. And that, of course, speeds up the process a lot. So we can draw frames, which are outline rectangles. We can also draw boxes, which are filled rectangles. We can draw lines. We can draw dots, which are individual pixels. We can draw circles, which are outline circles and disks, which are filled circles. We can also add some labels and we can select the selection tool and move stuff around. So we can select, for example, this piece and move it around. And also this rectangle could be moved around. You can also select any object by clicking the item in the list on the left side and you can change the parameters on the right side of the screen. You can also add predefined icons by clicking this icon tab and then dragging any image over the display. So for example, this battery icon or maybe this arrow you can import your own image or if you want you can actually draw the image and that's by clicking this draw button and then drawing the individual pixels you can fill the pixels with the left mouse button and delete the pixels with the right mouse button if you want you can also delete stuff and that's by clicking this x icon next to the item so i'll delete a few of the stuff or if you want you can delete everything by clicking this reset button and that's what i will do right now because i want to start with the blank screen and let's create something that looks like a progress bar screen I will start by drawing the frame in around this size, for example, and then a box which will be the fill of the progress bar. So for example, something like this. And of course, move it more to the left side. So there is only one pixel gap. Add a frame by clicking this string and clicking somewhere and changing the string to, for example, progress and some value, I don't know, 60%. Then I can add some screen title, for example, adding new string on the top of the screen. This one might be, for example, progress bar screen and change the font to some once more, for example, this one, move it all the way to the left side and draw a new line. That will be the divider between the top of the screen and the middle of the screen. And since we have a lot of icons to choose from, maybe we can add a few of those. For example, the lock icon, I will move it to the right side. I can add the Bluetooth icon, again move it to the right side. And finally, maybe the volume icon. 
again all the way to the right side like so at any time i can select the previous icons and also move those around if i want but i think that i will add one more icon that is this warning icon and i will move it next to the label so i'll move it down here and then select the label itself and move it more to the right side if i want i can also use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move it with one pixel increments at this point i like how it looks like so i think it's time to try it on the real arduino actually let's try it on walkway which is a free online arduino emulator and as a starting point, I will use a sketch from my previous video called Image to OLED in 60 seconds. So I'll open this walkway project and you can see that I have the Arduino Uno connected to the OLED screen. And if I run the simulation, we are just showing some image. So what I want to do is I want to delete this image. So I will delete this array from the code and it's quite big. And I also don't need this draw XBMV function in here. So all that's left is the initialization of the library of the display. Then in the setup, I have the begin function. And in the main loop, I am clearing the buffer and then sending the buffer and whatever in between will be drawn to the display and that's the place where we'll paste the code from the Lopaka editor. So I will jump back to the Lopaka and click this copy code that will copy this piece of code in the clipboard then go back to walk the emulator and paste it in here. Now the only thing that I need to do is to move those images all those arrays outside of the loop so I will move it outside here but other than that we don't need to do anything else. You can see that we are drawing frames, boxes, strings, lines and images and hopefully when I click this restart simulation button I should see the very same design as we were seeing in the Lopaka editor and and that seems to be the case. Actually, let me show both windows at the same time. So this is the walkway editor and this is our design in Lopaka. And you can see that we were able to create this design in a very short time. So the only thing that remains is running this on the real Arduino. So let's do it right now. For that, you will need the Arduino Uno and the SSD 1306 128 by 64 pixel resolution I2C version of the OLED display. I have three different versions ranging from the smallest 0.9 inch size the middle one is around 1.5 inch and the biggest one is around 2.4 inches. The physical size doesn't matter and they should all work. You will also need some jumper wires to connect the display to the Arduino. The connection is the same as on the Wokwe website, which means that the ground goes to ground, the VCC goes to 5 volts, then the SCL, the serial clock, goes to pin A5 and the SDA, serial data, goes to pin A4. If you don't want to remember those pins, the Arduino board will oftentimes have a dedicated SDA and SCL pins. Those are the same pins as pins A4 and A5, just properly labeled. So once we have everything connected, we can jump to the Arduino IDE. And here you can paste the code from the walkway sketch. If you have never used the U8G2 library before, you need to go to libraries, type in U8G2 and click the install button or in my case it's the update button because I already have this library installed. Then you select the correct board and click the upload button. And hopefully after a few seconds you should see the very same sketch running on the real Arduino board. It's kind of boring because nothing is moving, nothing is animating, but we can easily fix that. And that's one of the advantage of using the UADG2 functions to draw stuff instead of using for example full screen image. So I can set the fill of the progress bar to be for example 100 to fill it all the way to the right side. And I can also change the label to say progress 100%. And if I restart the simulation, now it should look differently. But obviously I would like those to be animated on their own. So let's create a new integer variable called progress and set it to 0 and use this progress variable to set the width of the rectangle of the fill of the progress. And once we do everything, I want to increase the progress. So I'll say the progress equals progress plus one. And of course, if the progress is bigger than 100, I will set it back to zero. And so if I restart the simulation now, I should see the fill of the gauge being animated, but it's going very slow because I have this delay of one second in between every frame. I guess I can just remove it and see how fast it goes without any delay at all. And it's not super fast, so I guess I will keep it this way that is without any delay in between frames. We also want to change the value inside this string, and for that we will also need a new variable that will be the C style string, which is just an array of characters. So it will be character, and let's call it buffer. And we need to have enough characters to hold all the individual characters. So, so I guess in this case, let's just make it, for example, 32 to have some space around. And before we show the content of the buffer, I want to set it to be the progress, then the value. The value will be the progress and then the percentage sign. And I can do it using the sprintf function. And that function could be used to put all the different stuff into our buffer. So let's just use our buffer. And we want to add the string progress. And we also want to get the value of the variable progress. And to do that, we have to type in percentage sign D that stands for number. And as a third parameter, I will set the progress variable name. So for our draw string function, we will be now drawing the content of the buffer instead. 
Well, let's restart the simulation and see what we get. So the value is changing, but we are missing the percentage sign. And we can add this inside the string as well, but there is one catch. And that's because the percentage sign is used to get the value of the variable. So if we want to print the percentage sign, we have to actually put two percentage signs like this. And that should fix it. So now the progress bar is filling and the value is reflecting the change. Let's quickly try it on the real Arduino. And as you can see, it's also animating nicely on this OLED display. So in no time we were able to get this design up and running thanks to the Lopaka application. Let me actually show you one more feature of the Lopaka application that is quite helpful and that I might be using for my future projects as well. As mentioned already, I start most of my projects in Photoshop or Photopea and then when I'm happy with the result, I export those individual layers by going to File, Export Layers. And it could look something like this. Now even at this point, the Lopaka application could be helpful in speeding up the workflow. But I need to also export the full screen image by going to File, Export as PNG image and then exporting this. Inside Lopaka you can import this image by clicking Import image and selecting this full screen image, then placing it on the canvas and clicking this Overlay Ignore checkbox, which means that it will be not part of the code, but it can still be used as a reference to position other elements. So now what I can do is I can import our images. Unfortunately I have to do this one by one. And then I can start placing those images over my canvas and position those based on this reference image. So again, I don't have to care about the positions because those positions will be set automatically in the code. I just drag and drop stuff and make sure it's on the right positions. And as a bonus, I don't need to convert those images into the arrays because that will be done automatically for me in the Lopak application. So I have this resulted code that I can test on the Arduino. And that is done by copying the code in the clipboard, going into my sample sketch and pasting it in here and just moving those individual images outside of the main loop, like so, and then restarting the simulation. And what would previously take me a few minutes could be now done in just a few seconds. So again, using this reference image by clicking this ignore overlay checkbox could be a nice helper for positioning already exported images. And here is also this design running on the Arduino. And I have to say that being able to focus on the UI design and not worrying about the positions and sizes was quite nice. The Lopak application is quite simple and has some limited functionality, but even at this point it's very helpful. I can already see how it can help me save some time, especially for complex designs. And I'm very excited to see how the project will evolve. And that's all for today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please put those in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.